Have you ever found yourself really feeling angry and overwhelmed and frustrated and all of these kind of bubbling emotions coming up and you don't feel like you can get them out because first of all you're probably not really sure what it is you're angry or frustrated about or perhaps the people that have made you angry and frustrated you know in your heart aren't doing it to pee you off <laughs> they are just you know it's just a, a set of circumstances that have come together all at once that just feel like an explosion about to happen and I think if you're a midlife woman in the throes of perimenopause or that menopausal transition then you're probably going to relate to this I know I certainly have and in this video I want to share a bit of a story about somebody that I was coaching this morning and uh, their sense of feeling really sort of wound up and, and angry and overwhelmed and not feeling like they had any way to vent that without potentially burning bridges and possibly wrecking some relationships which they absolutely didn't want to do so i wanted to share a tool that i use when i feel like that that means that you can get that emotion out you can process the emotion and still keep all of your friends and family <laughs> uh, on your side. So hi, if you're new here, I'm Bev. I am a coach, particularly for midlife women going through what I like to call the messy middle of midlife, that transition that we go through when our hormones are all over the place and life throws us a shed load of challenges uh, that we have to deal with. And um, I'm also a postmenopausal woman with late diagnosed ADHD and I know firsthand how that rage and that anger can start to bubble up in us when life throws us a whole load of stuff all at once. So let me tell you quickly about my client this morning. So I we, we weren't meant to be talking about any of this. It was actually about business and nothing really to do with getting angry. But when we got on the call this morning, it was quite obvious that my client was stressed. She has got so much going on and more, I think, than, than I would feel comfortable trying to cope with, for sure. And we spent the first half hour of our session and she just vented. And that is absolutely fine. That, for me, is what coaching is all about. It's that safe space where you can come and get things off your chest without fear of judgment, without fear of somebody trying to fix everything that's going on. Because most of the time when we're in that situation, there's nothing really fixable. It's just this sort of layering of challenge upon challenge. So I let her vent for, for half an hour and I could see her physically starting to relax. She was getting all of this angst out that she hadn't been able to express to the people who had created that in her life because she loves them. She knows that they're not trying to make her angry. And it's just, you know, one of these, like a, a catalog of, of challenges all coming at once. And at the end of the, the half an hour when, when she'd finished her sort of her vent, I asked her if she had any tools that she could sort of go to to help her process that emotion. And she she said she didn't. She didn't like meditation. She couldn't really figure out um, how to meditate. It didn't seem to work for her. And I totally get this. If you've got an active, overactive ADHD brain, which she has and I have, if you're not familiar with meditation, it can feel really challenging because our expectations of what meditation is about can be a little bit can be a bit inaccurate so i thought well apart from anything else although i think meditation would help her now was not the right time she already had so much going on so much on her plate the idea of then asking her to go and try to meditate would have just felt like another chore 
and another thing on her plate. So I knew meditation wasn't going to be the answer for her. But I asked her if she ever journals and she said, no. And I said, well, would you be willing to give that a go? And she said, well, I thought journaling was just about writing down all the good things in life that you want and your goals and, you know, gratitude and all of that sort of thing. And I said, well, yes, it can be. But actually, one of the best tools for my anger is journaling. And the reason that I love journaling when I'm in that kind of overwhelmed, stressed, angry, frustrated bubbling up inside state is because the journal feels like a safe space to vent. So if you haven't got a coach, or even if you have got a coach, for me, getting a, a, a notebook, I probably don't do this in my normal journal. The journal that I do my, my lovely little sort of uh, doodles and gratitude and everything in, I, that's a slightly different book. But I have a big A4 notebook like a big sort of, you know, letter size notebook. And that is my vent journal. And I have to tell you, sometimes that journal would be X rated because I swear, <laughs> I rant. I say all of the things in that journal that I would probably want to say to somebody but know that I wouldn't because I could do irreparable damage to our relationship and I think this is very human. I think for a lot of women we've been brought up to believe that it's not ladylike to lose your temper. It's a sign of weakness to get angry but anger is a very human emotion. How we channel that anger is important but trying to suppress the anger, I think has a very negative effect on our mental health and also on our relationships because when we don't express the anger, it gets bottled up and it, it's like a tinderbox waiting to explode. So when I journal and I vent into my journal, it's my way of being able to process those emotions the rage, the anger, the frustration, whatever the perceived negative emotion is, it's a way for me to get it out of my head and onto paper, paper which nobody else ever needs to see. Um, I don't hide my journals. If anybody comes across them and reads them, there might be a lot of ranting in there, but that's my safe space. I don't lock them away. Nobody in my house reads my journals that I'm aware of, or if they do, I'm sure they'd be bored, rigid, and probably would really struggle to understand my scroll because that's the thing about when I journal to vent, I don't care how it reads. I don't care about grammar or spelling or being legible. I don't care if I'm swearing. I don't care if I'm saying exactly what is on my mind. The whole purpose is to get it out of here and onto the paper so that I can release it. And I think that's the most descriptive word I can use for the process. It is an emotional release. It's an emotional release in a very safe way. And it's amazing. There's this sort of magic that happens when you've finished writing. And, and you know, I don't tend to read it back. I don't need to. That's not the purpose. It's not a novel. You know, it's literally getting out of here what's in here and onto paper. And in that sort of transitional process of um, the, 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 the thoughts and the feelings going from being in my head to traveling through my arm, through into the pen, onto the page, it's that it's just the, the, the biggest release of emotions and I find it so useful and so powerful. And quite often when I'm done, I will rip the page out and I will get rid of it. You know, if it's been particularly damning, <laughs> I might not want it to be found, but it doesn't matter because almost immediately that I finish writing, I feel lighter. I feel like I've had my moment to get that anger out of me and I can then start to 
slow down, calm down, see things more rationally, because let's face it, it's very, very hard to think rationally when you are really stressed, when you're really angry, when you've got this burning rage going on. So once I've processed the, the venting into my journal, then I can start to take a step back, take a breath and think, okay, what can I control in this? What's outside of my control? Who do I need to speak to? What do I need to know? What information do I need to be able to, to move forward? What can I let go of? Because now that I've processed the anger, it's like the clouds lift and I can see clearly. I am a huge fan of journaling and whilst venting into my journal is incredibly powerful, there are lots of other ways that you can use journaling to help with mental health, to help with goal setting, just to help with feeling happier. And I've created uh, the ultimate guide, my ultimate guide to journaling, giving you different types of styles of journaling, different ways to journal, and a whole load of journaling prompts that you can use to get the grey matter working and get those thoughts and feelings flowing. And I'll stick a link in the description if you want to get a hold of it. It's completely free and you can use it and go back to it over and over again as often as you like and learn the power of journaling. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.